Hello, I'm Mike Kennedy, Logistics Director, 6386 RTU. We're from the Army. This is year 19 for our participation. This is the Army's year. We always lead the way. Who are for the Army? Ladies and gentlemen, in the distance, the Los Angeles Police Department Motorcycle Drill Team. The tradition of these LAPD Motorcycle Drill Team officers dates back to the 20s, almost as long as motorcycles were first used by the LAPD in 1909. Ladies and gentlemen, since 1909, the drill team has served as a bridge to connect the community with the members of the department. They perform several times a year at events like the King Day Parade, Canoga Park Memorial Day Parade, LAPD Valley Traffic Division Still Saving Lives Car Show, the Nisei Week Parade, Highland Park Veterans Day Parade, and the Hollywood Christmas Parade. So if you've been to those, you've seen them before. This team is comprised of a drill master, 16 or 20 motor officers and four squads, and tail motors. They're a citywide unit from all areas of the city. Being a member of the LAPD motorcycle drill team requires sacrifice. Some of you may know this, others may not. They're required to adjust their own schedules to attend practice and appearances, and most of the poor performances are held on holidays or weekends. And they also have to keep their riding shields sharper, much sharper than anyone else on the force. Ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles Police Department's finest.
as you can well imagine, the drill team members have to have trust in themselves and their other members, the utmost trust. Timing and communication of utmost importance. Let's show them our appreciation once again. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles Police Department Motorcycle Drill Team, a tradition. We salute them as they salute us on this 57th annual Armed Forces Day Parade. Good morning, my name is Staff Sergeant Carlos Carvajal Molina, United States Air Force. I want to thank you for coming for today's Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade. Thank you for your support. Have a great day. As they approach, you should know the United States Marine Corps flag is presented by Sergeant Xavier Wolof. United States Navy flag by Hospital Corpsman 2nd Class Joshua Henderson. And the prologue sign being pushed by future perhaps members of the armed forces. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. The United States Coast Guard flag is presented by Yeoman Petty Officer Second Class Timothy Ingalls. The guard protecting the right side of the national colors is Sergeant Christopher Menevar. And the guard on the left is Corporal Brandon Dossier. Our Grand Marshal, ladies and gentlemen, General Robert B. Abrams. General Abe Abrams became the 22nd Commander of the U.S. Armed Forces Command August 10, 2015. He's a 1982 graduate of the U.S. Military Academy, commissioned as an armor officer first, and has 33 years of service. This is our honorary Grand Marshal, Mr. Joe Montaigne. I'm not sure many of you won't recognize him. In case you don't, his movie credits include Searching for Bobby Fischer, The Godfather, Part 3, Celebrity, Forget Paris, Liberty Heights, The Rat Pack, The Last Don. Just a few examples of his, what he's given to us. Currently, he's starring in the CBS drama Criminal Minds. It's now in its 11th season. Joe has a very deep, enduring passion for the military and veterans' issues. He's the national spokesman for the campaign to build the U.S. Army Museum. And this May, Mr. Joe Montaigne will be co-hosting the National Memorial Day concert in Washington, D.C. for the 14th year in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Joe Montaigne.
Ladies and gentlemen, you can hear them faintly in the distance as they approach. This is the 300th Army Band, Hollywood's own, Southern California's only Army Reserve Band. And straight overhead, ladies and gentlemen, another one of our military offerings. Once again, all branches of the Department of Defense coming out, honoring current and veteran military members here to serve. The plane you see overhead are the Golden Knights parachuting team. They're from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, started in 1959. How fitting to be able to see the aircraft of the Golden Knights circling above while listening to the sounds of the 300th Army Band. This is Southern California's own. They serve the Southwest region and the 63rd Regional Support Command. And ladies and gentlemen, right behind the 300th Army Band, our esteemed mayor, Mr. Patrick Fury. <laughs> elected to the City Council 2008, elected mayor 2014, a resident of Torrance for 29 years. The mayor is joined by his wife, Terry, the grandson, Dylan, a freshman at West High. He and his wife are proud to live in the most patriotic city in America. Ladies and gentlemen, approaching the stands, Councilman Kurt Wiedemann. Mr. Wiedemann is elected to the City Council in July of 2013, a resident of Torrance for 61 years. He attended his first Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade in 1960. Who remembers that? Riding with him today, his wife Sue Golden and their daughter Jody Sexton. Councilman Wiedemann was elected July 2013, a resident of Torrance for 61 years. And Mr. Gene Barnett, elected to the City Council June 2008, a resident of Torrance for 62 years. Today marks his 44th Armed Services Day Parade, and riding with him today is wife Linda, three daughters, six granddaughters, and three sons-in-law. Coming next, Councilwoman Heidi Ann Ashcraft. She was appointed to the City Council December 2013, elected to the City Council June 2014, a resident of Torrance for 38 years. Riding with her today, her husband, Dan Ashcraft, and their granddaughter, Annabelle Amandaris. Round of applause, please. Coming next, Mr. Tim Goodrich one of our council members, elected June 2014. Councilman Tim Gridrich has served four years in the United States Air Force. Next in line, approaching the podium, council member Jeff Rizzo. Jeff is elected to the city council in June 2014, a resident of Torrance for 59 years, a lifelong resident, and retired Torrance police lieutenant with 30 years of service to the city. And taking the ultimate selfie, Councilman Mike Griffiths. Elected to the city council in August 2014, resident of Torrance for 33 years, Mr. Griffiths. He grew up in Pasadena. And I'm told next to the Rose Parade, this is his favorite parade. I wonder why. Coming next, Miss Rebecca Poirier, city clerk. She was elected to that position in June of 2014, a resident of Torrance for nine years, and well protected from the sun. Next, approaching the podium, Ms. Dana Cortez, City Treasurer. Ms. 
Cortez was elected to the City Council in 2010. She's been serving the residents of Torrance for 16 years. And riding with her today is her husband, Leonardo Berrigan, and their daughters, Vanessa Berrigan, Natasha Berrigan, and Ariana Berrigan. In patriotic regalia. And approaching next, this is a Congressman, Ted Liu. In 2014, Ted Lieu was elected to California's 33rd Congressional District, also elected president of the Democratic freshman class by his colleagues. He's a former active duty officer in the United States Air Force, currently serves as a lieutenant colonel in the reserves. And Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Congresswoman Waters serving her 13th term in the United States Congress, proudly representing numerous cities in the South Bay, Torrance, Lomita, Lawndale, Inglewood, Hawthorne, Gardena, fighting every day for seniors, families, small businesses, and the veterans of the armed forces. Mr. David Hadley, California State Assemblyman. Mr. Hadley elected to represent the South Bay, including the city of Torrance. In 2014, he and his wife Suzanne have four kids, Jack, Claire, Ellen, and Faith. Jack, by the way, a third year student at the US Military Academy at West Point. Round of applause. <laughs> California State Senator Ben Allen. Senator Allen elected to serve the people of Torrance in November of 2014. He's the chair of the Senate Elections and Constitutional Amendments Committee as well as the Legislature's Joint Committee on the Arts, joined by Melanie Luther. <laughs> Los Angeles County Supervisor Don Canabi, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Supervisor Canabi has represented Los Angeles County's 4th District since he was first elected in 1996. Overseeing a region home to more than 2 million residents in 27 cities, Approaching the podium now, Major General Joseph M. Martin from the Army. General Martin graduated from the United States Military Academy in 1986. He was commissioned as an armor officer. Some of his awards and decorations include the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star Medal with V Device, Meritorious Service Medal, Army Commendation Medal with V Device. Approaching the podium as we speak, Major General Mark Paulzer from the Army Reserve. Major General Paulser is from the class of 1982, United States Military Academy at West Point, distinguished military graduate, working at all levels of the Army, including Deputy Director for Logistics at the Office of the G G Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Pentagon, leading troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. He currently commands the 79th Sustainment Support Command in Los Alamitos, Orange County, California. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Lawrence A. Haskins from the Army National Guard. Major General Haskins serves as commander of the California Army National Guard, providing oversight and guidance to a force of more than 17,000 citizen soldiers, and he's the principal advisor to the Adjutant General on employment of the California Army National Guard for both state and federal missions. General Haskins, commanding, controlling division's headquarters, assigned to subordinate commands more than 10,000 soldiers stationed from Sacramento to the California-Mexico border. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you Brigadier General Paul K. Lebedine from the Marine Corps. <laughs> Brigadier General Lebedine, is currently the Commanding General of the 4th Marine Division in New Orleans, Louisiana. Personal decorations. 
include the Meritorious Service Medal, Legion of Merit with Gold Star, the Bronze Star with two Gold Stars, the Combat Action Ribbon with Gold Star. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Mike Shatinsky from the Navy. Admiral Shatinsky grew up in Southern California, graduated from Loyola High School in Los Angeles. He retired recently. During his Navy career, he served as a surface warfare officer, spent many active and reserve years at sea on battleships, frigates, and oilers. Also spent a great deal of his military career in the Navy's Expeditionary Combat Force. He's deployed to operations enduring freedom, Iraqi freedom, leading military forces protecting the ports and the waterways of Kuwait and Iraq. He is the holder, the wearer of a Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star Medal, two Meritorious Service Medals, four Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medals, and we salute him. Folks, may I present to you Lieutenant General Samuel A. Greaves. Lieutenant General Greaves is the commander of the Space and Missile Systems Center, Air Force Base Command, Los Angeles Air Force Base, and the Air Force Program Executive Officer for Space. General Greaves manages the research, the design, development, acquisition, and sustainment of space launch vehicles and satellites, GPS systems, and associated command and control systems. His budget is $6 billion annually. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Joseph A. Servideo from the Coast Guard. Rear Admiral Servideo is the commander of the 11th Coast Guard District, has been so since June 2014, overseeing multi-mission Coast Guard operations from the California-Oregon border to Peru, including Arizona, Utah, and Nevada. Coming next, ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Scott Montoya. U.S. Marine Corps, Legion of Valor. Sergeant Montoya received the Navy Cross, serving as a scout sniper for the 2nd Battalion, 23rd Marine Division during Operation Iraqi Freedom, April 8, 2003. This is how the story goes. During the battle for Baghdad, his sniper team arrived as another was coming under heavy small arms fire and he rushed forward to drag a, a wounded Iraqi civilian to safety and did so for two wounded Marines as well, putting his own safety at risk to help those in need. His superiors have called that an outstanding display of decisive leadership, courage in the face of enemy fire, utmost devotion to duty, keeping with the highest tradition of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. We salute you, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Sergeant Edward Foster. <laughs> Sergeant Foster received the Bronze Star Medal with V for Valor as a medic in the Korean War at the Battle for Pork Chop Hill, 14th November, 1952. His story is well inspiring. With disregard to his own safety, responding to a cry for medic, he left his place of cover and ran to the side of a wounded soldier in a field. Mortar shells falling all around him. He himself was wounded three days later at Outpost Pork Chop and was evacuated to Japan. He's now 85 years old. And this is his 15th consecutive year at the Armed Forces Day Parade. It's a pleasure to be here, and thanks to the Lord, I made it this far. And I, this is my 16th year with the Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade, and I hope to make another one soon. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, approaching the podium as we speak, the Bishop Montgomery High School Night Band and Guard.
The Bishop Montgomery High School Night Band and Guard, once again continuing a tradition of supporting our veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tuskegee Airmen awarded the Congressional Gold Medal March 29, 2007 by President George W. Bush, completing 15,000 sorties, 1,500 missions, destroying more than 260 enemy aircraft, sinking one enemy destroyer, demolishing numerous enemy installations. The Tuskegee Airmen awarded numerous high honors, including the Distinguished Flying Cross, Legions of Merit, Silver Stars, Purple Heart, Croix de Guerre, the Red Star of Yugoslavia. Outstanding performance, extraordinary heroism. Ladies and gentlemen, the Montford Point Marine Association with the Buffalo Soldiers. This is the Los Angeles chapter. These are the forerunners of today's modern day Marine Corps. From June 1942 to September 1949, about 20,000 black Marines trained at a separate boot camp, Montford Point Camp, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And they were at every World War II amphibious landing except Guadalcanal. As General Alexander Grandegriff, Commandant of the Marine Corps, referred to them, they are the chosen few. They are Marines. Also having received the Congressional Gold Medal, June 27, 2012. And riding with them are the Tuskegee Airmen of the Los Angeles chapter, including their intel officer, their chief mechanic, Mr. Jeffrey Hedges, their bomber pilot, logistics officers. These are the officers, ladies and gentlemen, who paved the way for a whole new brand of Americans to show their patriotism, showing us all that we are all one. And when it comes right down to it, we all fight as one. Ladies and gentlemen, Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor survivor Dick Corder. He served aboard the USS Oglala. His ship was sunk on the 7th. He went to the captain's boat. They went out to fight the fire on the USS West Virginia. And then after they had that one out, they were fighting on the USS Arizona, fighting the fires there. Two fires on two battleships lasting almost three days before they were able to put them out. In his words, they were too jumpy to sleep anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, the 100th, 442nd Veterans Association. Shortly after Pearl Harbor was attacked, those of Japanese ancestry living in Hawaii and America were treated as the enemy. Over 120,000 of them were unjustly arrested, forced to move to camps, isolated. Despite this, thousands wanted to prove they were as American as anybody else, and they joined the 100th Infantry Battalion and the 442nd Regiment Combat Team. They fought valiantly in Italy and in France, became known as being one of America's most decorated military units for their size and strength and their length of service. We all fight as one. Their battle cry is written on the side of the truck, go for broke. Ladies and gentlemen, true patriots, looking past their own personal experiences of what might have happened to them and fighting for the country that they love so that we would later learn to love them as much as they loved us in the time that they were being interned. My name is Sergeant Peterson with the California Army National Guard. I'd like to thank you guys for your support of the 57th Annual Armed Forces Day Parade here out in the city of Torrance and stay tuned. Coming into the forefront, World War II veterans. The men and women that kept our country safe. 
Escorting these World War II veterans today are vehicles and members of the California National Guard. They're based right here in the city of Torrance. These vets riding in the parade are from all branches of the military. They're 90 to 102 years old. These vets have served our country in Iwo Jima, Okinawa, Pearl Harbor, Guadalcanal, Normandy, Burma, the Battle of the Bulge. These literally are the men and women that kept our country free, ladies and gentlemen. The greatest generation. Let's all stand and salute them. Just a few of the names of the people riding with us today. Russ Mayer, Navy Signalman, third class, Pacific Theater. Leroy Forehand, Aviation Ordnance, first class, in the Navy, Pacific Theater. Joe DeMille, major in the Army Air Corps, a pilot of a fighter in Italy. Harry Nelson, Coast Guard Signalman, first class in Africa. John Fahey, Navy Radioman, first class, Battle of Attu. Tony DeQuisto, Navy Fireman Engineer during the Philippines Liberation. Jim Harrison, Army Sergeant Major in Europe, Alaska, Germany, Austria, Korea, Vietnam, need I go on? Maurice Murray Ransom, Captain of the Army Air Corps. John Reynolds, a Navy Chief Petty Officer, Missile Technician in the Pacific. These are the men and women that stat on, stood on the battleships. Defended us at a time when history could quite easily, without their help, have gone completely differently. These are the patriots after whom we model ourselves today. Among them as well, Ernie Thompson, a Navy engineer water tender first class, Pete Demeth, Merle Moore, Charles Deemer, Harvey Reeves, Pete Ellis, Glenn Clayland, Albert Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, a personal meeting right in front of the podium. A current Army officer whose father served with one of the veterans. There can be no closer personal contact with men such as Joe Eskenegi, an Army Private First Class on December 7th, 1941. Harry Platkin, serving with the Seabees in the Pacific Islands. Tito Fernando Steer, George Campo, Gilbert Godfrey, Clarence Lee Cummings, all of them. All of them here today to honor the military. Hello, I'm Joe DeMills, glad to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, a final round of applause for these great Americans who defended our country at a time of need. If you love your freedom, if you love your country, thank a World War II veteran. Approaching the podium, the youngest men and women in uniform today, the third through eighth graders, the cadets of St. Catherine's Academy Marching Knights. This is their band, their color guard, their unarmed drill team, and the marching regiment, all from Anaheim, California. St. Catharines was founded by the Dominican Sisters. It's the only academy of its kind in the nation. It's attended by both local and international students representing more than eight different countries. And this year they're celebrating 127 years of dedication to the Catholic community, ministry, study, and prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up, 
the Philippine Scouts Heritage Society. This is the 26th U.S. Cavalry Philippine Scouts Mounted Ceremonial Unit. The 26th fought at the outbreak of the World War II in the Philippines. This regiment is comprised of American officers and Philippine troopers. The 26th was the last U.S. Cavalry Regiment that fought on horseback. They have the distinction of conducting the very last cavalry charge in the history of the U.S. Army. 1942 on the island of Luzon. And today the legend of the 26th lives on through the Philippine Scouts Heritage Society honoring those who served in World War II, sharing their history with the public. And a round of applause for our youngest members of our, our military community, you might call them. helping us in carrying the numbers and honoring those who came before. And we see approaching, waving, the Armed Forces Day 5K Run Walk winners. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. John McGeff, who I happen to know personally. I've been begging to come out and see some of his races. He keeps saying, oh, no, 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 no. And then I show up today and he wins. There was a Kenyan that came in before him, but he relinquished. So John, second place, wins the 5K. <laughs> Ethiopian, my, my bad. Hi, hi, welcome to Torrance. Once again to the men and women who support us here today, the youngest. Round of applause for these young ladies. And approaching the podium, the U.S. Navy battleship Iowa, or at least representatives thereof. The Iowa is at the Los Angeles waterfront. It's celebrating the American spirit. This is a Ford F-350 flatbed truck with a simulated harpoon missile. And riding our veterans, crew, and volunteers. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the, the Battleship Iowa is open for the public for visitation, also group events. Big round of applause for these American heroes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, District 4. And riding on the float is the 4th District VFW Commander Dave Laura. VFW Auxiliary President, Sharonda Lewis. Force District VFW and DFW Auxiliary Members. Ladies and gentlemen, we salute you. Arriving in just a second at the podium, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, District 53. Vietnam Veterans of America, South Bay, Chapter 53. Thrilled once again to be participating in this great Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade. These folks have been providing service to veterans in the local community for over a quarter of a century now. This is the only veteran service organization specifically chartered by Congress to service Vietnam veterans and their families. They provide equal assistance to veterans of all wars, past and present, for injuries, illnesses. Their motto is, never again will one generation of veterans abandon another. The creed under which they live. And a personal member of thanks to people in the audience from the young ladies you see before you. Thanking us for supporting the military that we so dearly love. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of the Bob Hope USO.
And ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause. This is the Oath of Enlistment. Marching into place before you, you see approximately 500 young men and women preparing to join all various branches of the United States military. This continues to be the largest mass oath of enlistment conducted publicly, a valued tradition of the Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade, and seemingly to honor them straight above a C-53. Timed as if a beacon to welcome them into all various arms of the armed forces. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. This is the mass oath of enlistment. At a time when our nation has been conducting sustained combat operations globally on the war on terror, fitting that we recognize the sacrifice that they're voluntarily making to this great nation, vowing to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. This is the new breed, ladies and gentlemen, who will fight against all enemies, foreign and domestic. OK, good afternoon. It's my incredible honor and privilege to administer this oath of enlistment to all of you. You're going to look back on this day. It's going to change your life. Because you, a very small number in our country, are going to take an oath today. You're going to raise your right hand. You're going to swear an oath to defend our country, to our way of life, to what all of our country stands for. And you do so willingly. And you know what the world is like today. You know the sacrifices that are in front of you. But that's what makes you so special. As part of our America's next greatest generation, enlisting in the service during time of war is unlike any other time. And that puts you in a special category. So today, when you get done, it'll begin your journey for a life of service. Could be short, could be long. But the fact of the matter is, is you've chosen a life well, you're going to put other people's interests ahead of your own. And that is special. So here's your last chance to step away. Because we look forward to having you on our team. OK, everybody raise your right hand. Repeat after me with courage and conviction. No, no. I'll tell you when to repeat after me. I want you to repeat after me with all of your, I, don't say it. I want to hear with all of your enthusiasm. I, state your full name. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all, enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic that, I will obey the that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States, the United States and, the orders, and the orders of the Army of the Potomac, and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to regulations, and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help, so help me God. Lower your hands. Congratulations. Welcome to the team. Let's give them a round of applause.
Ladies and gentlemen, these young men and women, truly the cream of the crop of our society. Representing less than 1% of all the eligible men and women in this nation, continuing the honored tradition of defending the freedoms we've enjoyed in this nation for over 239 years. Hello Torrance, I'm Sergeant Leindecker and I'm here with my brothers and sisters in arms watching the Torrance State Parade. We have Marines from Marine Forces Reserves, Camp Pendleton, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, and we also have some new Marines here today and I'm just looking forward to enjoying the nice climate of Southern California. Since the birth of our nation, American soldiers have always committed to a professional ethic of values, possessed unquestionable character, and are highly competent. The drill team is the embodiment of these qualities. Members of the drill team are from all corners of the United States with a wide range of specialties. They have perfected their mission and are here to share with you today. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Drill Team. Today, the drill team is commanded by their drill commander, First Lieutenant Matthew Daggett of Germantown, Maryland. The drill team represents today's soldiers as well as yesterday's heroes who proudly fought in the Revolutionary War and continue to serve in the hills of Afghanistan throughout the Middle East, Europe, and Korea. Today, the Army has more than 187,000 soldiers forward deployed in over 140 countries around the world. The Army is manned, equipped, and trained to execute any range of missions. This is done with the same trust, precision, discipline, and professionalism that the drill team displays with each rifle spin and coordinated move.
Today, the drill team is also led by their drill master, Sergeant First Class Brian Hines of Athens, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the ambassadors for today's army, yesterday's heroes, and tomorrow's soldiers, our United States Army Drill Team. And thank you once again to Specialist Kevin Janes for presenting that to us. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for him, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we didn't get the Golden Knights. We saw them in their preamble, but it was too windy for them to parachute. But we do have Navy planes coming in very soon. North American Navions, I'll keep you posted on that. They're coming from Whiteman Airport in Pacoima. And as soon as they get close by, I'll let you know so you can look up and give a gander. In the distance approaching, you see Division I, the 40th Infantry Division Band. But before they arrive, a round of applause for our Cub Scouts who are helping us out today. And may this be a long tradition in your lives. And the Brownies. Round of applause, please. And once again, approaching the 40th Infantry Division Band, located at the Joint Forces Training Base in Los Alamitos, California. Commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 4, Eric K. Suganuma. And the Drum Major Lead is Specialist Timothy Thomas. This 40th Infantry Division Band has performed before United States presidents, governors, numerous celebrities, most importantly, the citizens of our local communities, such as yourselves. The goal is to Bruce, boost morale and esprit de corps, but each member of this band is a soldier first and foremost. And the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment's Horse Detachment, ladies and gentlemen. Established in August of 2000 to capture the historical lineage of the 11th ACR from Fort Irwin, California. This is the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's 2nd Squadron Marching Element. This is a 30-man infantry platoon. They're carrying their own personal assigned weapons.
The formation is called the Wedge. As you'll notice, the interval between these team members is usually about 10 meters. It expands, it contracts, depending on the terrain. When it's rough terrain, poor visibility, or other factors make controlling the fire team difficult, the interval is reduced. And the sides of this wedge formation can also collapse into a column or a file formation. Once again, this is the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment 2nd Squadron Marching Element. And the weapons you see them carrying are their own weapons, their own assigned firearms. Overhead, we have the Stearman PT-17 Cadet coming from Cable Airport. And another Stearman coming in from Torrance Airport. Hi, I'm Captain Dan Galgano from the Coastal Recruiting Company, U.S. Army Los Angeles Recruiting Battalion. You're watching the 57th Annual Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, before the podium, the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's M1A1 Abrams Tank. This is the third generation, the main battle tank produced in the United States. The M1A1 is named after General Crichton Adams, the former Army Chief of Staff. It's a well-armed, heavily armored, highly mobile tank designed for modern armored ground warfare. Notably, it uses a powerful gas turbine engine it's adopted sophisticated composite armor as its protection. It has separate ammunition storage and a blowout compartment for crew safety. It's one of the heaviest tanks in service, weighing close to 62 metric tons. Approaching now, ladies and gentlemen, the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's M2A2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. The M2A2 ODS, better known as the Bradley Fighting Vehicle. This is designed to transport infantry with armor protection providing cover fire. The M2A2 you see before you holds a crew of three, a commander, a gunner, a driver, full of ammunition and six fully equipped soldiers. Their primary arm armament is a 25 millimeter cannon firing up to 200 rounds a minute, accurate up to 2,500 meters. And continuing the tradition of heavy artillery, the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's M109 Field Artillery Howitzer, the Paladin. This was first introduced in the early 1960s, upgraded a number of times, most recently to the M109A7. The one M109 family is the most common Western indirect fire support weapon of maneuvers and infantry divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's M992 Field Artillery Carrier, the CAT. This is an ammunition supply vehicle built on the chassis of the 109 series howitzer. It's colloquially referred to as a CAT, referring to its nomenclature, CAT Carry Ammunition Tracked. This is the vehicle that replaced the M548 supply vehicle. Unlike the M548, this one is armored. Ladies and gentlemen, the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's M88A2 Hercules Recovery Vehicle. This is a 63-ton armored track vehicle 
developed to recover the M1 Abrams tank. The thing on the back there is a crane that has literally a 31.8 ton lift capacity used to conduct maintenance on the Abrams tank. This is the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's Max Pro Mine Resistant Utility Vehicle. The Max Pro Mine Resistant Utility Vehicle, the latest in armory technology. This vehicle can withstand ballist ballistic fire, mine blasts, improvised explosive devices, nuclear, biological, and chemical environments, literally. A two-man crew, four to six passengers, and a gunner. And approaching the podium, the 11th Army Cavalry Regiment's mine-resistant armored protection, the MRAP. Overhead, the North American A6s from Riverside and Torrance Airport. Planes overhead being piloted by Chris LaFay, Brad Lang, John Colliver. This lightweight vehicle can reach speeds of up to 65 miles an hour, if you can believe that, carrying a payload of 4,000 pounds, on-road, off-road, the best in capability, transver transversing mountainous terrain with ease. And in the distance, ladies and gentlemen, the South High Marching Band. A round of applause for some of our youngest members joining the parade today. Enjoying their majesty, even from a distance, ladies and gentlemen, the South High Marching Band and the Drill Team. As they approach, you should know, ladies and gentlemen, the South High Spartan Band has been recognized by the Southern California Judges Association, as well as the Southern California School Band and Orchestra Association, as one of the top marching bands in the state of California. Round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of history, last year they performed in Rome, Italy, and Florence. And next year they've been invited to perform in both England and Scotland. The tune you're hearing today, Kenneth J. Alford's famous march, Army of the Nile. This march was written to celebrate the Allies' victory in Africa during World War II. The South High Marching Band. Ladies and gentlemen, before you, you see approaching the United States Army Corps of Engineer Command and Control Vehicle. The Los Angeles District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers responsible for more than a quarter of a million square miles in four states, from California to Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Protecting 420 miles of shoreline from Morro Bay to the Mexican border. Established in 1898, the district's missions include flood control damage reduction, Navigation, squirting crowds with water cannons, and this is the Army Reserve's M1142 tactical firefighting truck. It came into service in 2007 and can deploy almost to any terrain to combat the following types of fires and hazards, wildline, structural petroleum, oils, lubricants, hazardous materials, carries up to 2,500 gallons of water, pumped out at 500 gallons a minute. 
This is the U.S. Army Reserve M984A4 Wrecker Recovery Truck. This is heavy duty power, extreme performance and the most difficult of recovery missions. And ladies and gentlemen, coming straight overhead, Beechcraft T-34s from Gillespie Field. Pilots John Flippen, Larry Bierma, and George Watson. And approaching as we speak, the Central Torrance Combined Band. Welcome from Torrance, California, the Combined Marching Bands. This band includes students from the Madrona Middle School Band, the Hull Middle School Band, and the Torrance High School Tartar Band and Color Guard. All three schools marching together to honor the long history of the city of Torrance, now in its second century. And approaching, a warm welcome for the California State Military Reserve. California State Military Reserve Recruiting Task Force South, based at the National Guard Armory in Long Beach. Founded in 1841. And approaching, the North High School Junior ROTC joined overhead by the North American AT6s from Van Nuys. This year, the North High School Junior ROTC has continued to work diligently, pursuing excellence, once again, earning the coveted title of Honor Unit with Distinction, reserved for only the best Junior ROT programs nationwide. They're considered one of the top Junior ROTC programs on the West Coast, very supportive of the Torrance community, true professionals. The Color Guard is commanded by Cadet Captain Nicholas Lapari, unarmed drill team led by Cadet Captain Konami Masul. And after that, the drill team led by Cadet First Class Sergeant Miles Atkins. And approaching, ladies and gentlemen, the West High Entertainment Unit. The West High School Entertainment Union is one of the most widely traveled mu musical organizations in the Western United States, performing in 17 foreign countries, traveling to Europe every four years. Ladies and gentlemen, the entertainment unit, receiving consistent top honors at competitions throughout Southern California, a renowned reputation for excellence, both nationally and internationally. 
performing in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. In 1995, marking their fourth appearance in the Tournament of Roses Parade. And traveling as far and as wide as Spain, France, Italy, Switzerland, and Germany. This fall, they'll be returning to perform at the Philadelphia Thanksgiving Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, the Redondo Union High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC. This program is instructed by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Keith Willoughby, and First Sergeant Mick. The primary goal of this program is to develop informed and responsible citizens, disciplined, strong students who take initiative and leadership. This battalion was led by Battalion Commanding Officer Cadet Captain Tristan Schenkel, Battalion Executive Officer Cadet First Lieutenant Jerica Masolino. Folks straight overhead and approaching the Black Hawk helicopters flying down the parade route. This is the 29th 16th Aviation Battalion known as the Raptors out of Fort Irwin. The Black Hawk is a four-bladed twin-engine medium lift utility helicopter developed for the Army. It entered service in the U.S. Army in 1979 as a tactical transport helicopter. It's been in Somalia, the Balkans, Afghanistan, Grenada, Panama, Iraq. And before you, you just saw the Carson Senior High School Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps program. We salute you gentlemen. Developing the leadership abilities, the character of high school students who choose to participate. Teaching each of them the tenets of basic leadership. The skills that will result in the creation of young citizens imbued with patriotism and a deeper understanding to the responsibilities to our country. Approaching the podium is the USS Nevada, or a replica thereof. It's a 38-foot scale model of the battleship USS Nevada, towed by members of the US Navy Recruiting Command based in El Segundo, California, commanded by Commander Mike Lee. This model shows in exact detail what the battleship looked like December 7, 1941. It was the only ship to get underway during the attack on Pearl Harbor. It has seen action throughout the war in the Atlantic and the Pacific theaters. Once again, we're honored to salute the United States Navy and the battleship USS Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your applause for the Narbonne High School Navy Junior ROTC. This unit consists of a color guard followed by the commanding officer, Cadet Commander Marco Gallo. This is their ninth year participation in the Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade. We salute you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. And our warm thanks to their teachers, Lieutenant Nepo Museno, and their Master Chief, Gardner, both retired from the Navy. Who better to lead the youngest generation? Once again, the Narbonne Navy Junior ROTC. And following them is the U.S. Naval Sea Cadet Corps Haven Division. Haven Division and Training Ship Hamilton, units of the United States Navy Sea Cadet Corps. Training regularly at the United States Coast Guard Station in San Pedro. The Navy Sea Cadet Corps is a naval youth program chartered by the U.S. Congress in 1962. Ladies and gentlemen, the Richardson Middle School Band and Color Guard.
Folks, the Richardson Middle School Band and Color Guard is from Torrance. Pleased to be making their annual appearance. All the students today are performing. Grade six, seventh, and eight. And before us, we see United States Air Force Marching Unit. Colonel Donna L. Turner, commanding the 64th, 61st Air Base Group at Los Angeles Air Force Base, California, leading five squadrons, six staff agencies, totaling over 850 personnel. The 61st providing Air Base Group, medical, civil engineering, communications, a fine unit. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Black Hawk helicopter. Two of them. Correction, three. And approaching the stage, the San Pedro High School Junior ROTC. A warm reception, please. And this is the North High School Saxon Regiment Marching Band and Color Guard. The Saxon Regiment Marching Band and Color Guard recently took second place in the California State Band Championships, November 2015. They're under the direction of Brian Smith, student leadership including the drum major, Maria Voigt, assistant drum major is Efren Nickel, and the battery captain is Hugo Abe, and the Color Guard, Amy Shimizu. Folks, approaching the stage is the U.S. Coast Guard 26-foot aids to navigation and a return of the Blackhawks. The Coast Guard Aids to Navigation Team Los Angeles, Long Beach, is stationed in San Pedro, servicing buoys, lighthouses, fixed navigation beacons as well. Chief Casey Curry is the officer in charge. He and his crew in this trailerable Aids to Navigation boat can be seen anywhere from Dana Point to Morrow Bay, including Santa, Santa Catalina. U.S. Coast Guard Small Boat Station the station LA Long Beach, primary missions are search and rescue, maritime law enforcement and homeland security. It's a 29 foot response boat built by Metal Shark Boats, starting production in 2012 and carrying up to six crew members. Primary function is search and rescue, but not limited to that. Recreational boating safety, ports, waterways, coastal security. Alien and Migrant Interdiction. This boat can also be used for counter drugs interdiction. And the next vessel you see approaching in the distance is the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Vessel. The motor vessel Seahawk.
This is the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary Vessel being used at the Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach. The missions they perform are search and rescue, keeping the port and the boating public safe. Safety patrol at Pyramid Lake during the summer months, helping out the Sheriff's Department. Hello, I'm Lieutenant JG Kylie Johnson from Coast Guard Sector Los Angeles, Long Beach, out here at the Torrance Armed Forces Day Parade, and I just want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting us. This is the Torrance Dance and Drill Team, ladies and gentlemen. This group has been a participant at this parade since 1965. They don't look that old, do they? <laughs> this program began in 1960 as a parks and recreational class. It's continued to grow. This is an award-winning dance and drill team, ladies and gentlemen. Proud to be representing the city of Torrance, traveling throughout Southern California, competing and performing at various parades and shows made up of 34 girls from pre-K to the eighth grade. And our great thanks to the supervision of directors, Giovanni Leonard and Javonda Jones, and the rest of the crew that helped them. Folks, the vehicle approaching is a US Marine Expeditionary Force Humvee. This is a Marine Corps High Mobility Multi-Purpose Wheeled Vehicle, or Humvee. Introduced to the Marine Corps in 1984, with extensive upgrades since then. This most recent version features armored survivability kits, enabling these Humvees to better protect the Marines against roadside bombs. A turret mounted crew, a weapon from the M249 squad automatic weapons to wire guided anti tank missiles. And this next vehicle is the U.S. Marine Corps First Marine Division M777 Howitzer. The Howitzer you see trailed there. It's a towed 155 millimeter artillery piece. This M777 is the successor to the M198 howitzer, weighing over 9,000 pounds. That barrel you're looking at is a 200-inch barrel, firing up to five rounds a minute. The M777 can be combined with the Excalibur GPS-guided munitions, allowing accurate fire at a range of up to 25 miles. 25 miles accurate fire. And the U.S. Marine Corps First Marine Division Working Dogs from Camp Pendleton, California. Warm round of applause for them. The shots you're hearing are only blanks, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be alarmed. This is the first North Carolina Cavalry Civil War reenactors. These gentlemen seek to honor the soldiers both north and south who fought in the war between the states under the command of Captain Jim Ellingson and Lieutenant Paul Lewanski. They do battle and reenactments and living history school presentations throughout both California and the nation. And once again, don't be alarmed. Those are only blanks.